Well, a very warm welcome to you today as you join us for this online service for the second Sunday of Trinity on the 16th of June. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Our service today is a service of morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. God rules over all the earth. O come, let us worship. The Lord is in his holy temple. O come, let us worship. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O come, let us worship. The words now of the Vanity, Psalm 95, verses 1 to 7. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. 
Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And the words now of the Jubilate, Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, the appointed psalm today is Psalm 92, verses 1 to 4, and 12 to the end. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, and to sing praises to your name, O Most High to tell of your love early in the morning and of your faithfulness in the night time. Upon the ten-stringed instrument, upon the harp and to the melody of the lyre. For you, Lord, have made me glad by your acts and I sing aloud to the works of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Such as are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God they shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be vigorous and in full leaf. That they may show that the Lord is true. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now and will be forever. forever. Amen. Our reading today uh, comes from the second book of the Corinthians, uh, chapter 5, verses 6 to 10 and 14 to 17. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hungry and thirsty, were you there? Were you there? I was 
was cold, I was naked, were you there? Were you there? I was cold, I was naked, were you there? And the creed and the colour and the name, what matter were you there? When I needed a shelter, were you there? Were you there? When I needed a shelter, were you there? And the creed and the colour and the name, what matter were you there? When I needed a healer, were you there? Were you there? When I needed a healer, were you there? And now we'll hear a reading from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, and then full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, Jesus talks to us in parables, teachings about the kingdom of God. And today he talks about a farmer planting a seed and then waiting for the harvest. Well, of course, for the harvest to take place before the seed is planted, the farmer must do a great deal of work. The land must be cleared of weeds, the land must be ploughed, and then the seed can be planted into that ground. But the farmer then has to be patient. The farmer has to sit back and wait, rely on nature, rely on the elements for that seed to grow. It relies on rain, it relies on water, it relies on sunshine for that seed to germinate and then develop. If the farmer were to dig up that seed that he had planted every couple of days to see how it was getting on, of course that seed would never come to a full harvest. It would never come to fruition. So the farmer plants the seed and then, without perhaps understanding how the seed is growing, wait patiently to produce the results. Well, of course, with all Jesus' parables, he is talking to us not necessarily about a farmer planting the seed, but about us as Christians today planting the seed, the word of God, into the lives of others. We too have to prepare people's lives and then we have to share our faith. That is the word of God. That is the seed that we are called to plant. But just like the farmer who doesn't understand how that seed grows, we too are called to be patient. For many Christians, for us as churches, sometimes it can be quite frustrating because we want to see instant results. We want to think, well, when we've told people about God's love, they will instantly respond to that call and come and join us in worship, come and join us in church. But God tells us to sit back sometimes and to wait. A lot of churches do work with young people. We share in school assemblies, parent and toddler groups, Sunday schools, youth clubs. As we share God's love with those young people, again, we want to see those instant results, but very often they don't happen. It may not grow and develop in the lives of those young people for 10, 20, 30, maybe 40 years before the harvest of God's love can be shown. But as I say, we want to see those results and uh, sometimes it isn't always possible for us to see the, the result of the work that we have done with those young people. Well, sometimes as the seed is sown, again, it can be frustrating because sometimes the word of God will fall on rocky ground. Sometimes that seed may never develop. And again, we are called that we have to sometimes accept that fact. But Jesus tells us if we are patient, if we are allowing that seed uh, to grow, leave it all to God, then it is God who will provide those results. So today's parable is one about encouragement, telling us that we mustn't give up on planting that seed, that we must never give up on sharing the word of God with others. But it is a great lesson for us in allowing God to do his work because things don't always happen at our time we are called to be patient as followers of god followers of jesus in the world today but jesus tells us the kingdom of god has come and the kingdom of god is still coming we are called to build that kingdom here on earth we are called to share our faith, to show how knowing Jesus, how knowing God in our lives can have a great transforming power within our lives and in the lives of others. So think about the word of God that was implanted in our lives. Think about the people who planted that seed of faith in our lives. Give thanks for all that they did in sharing that faith with us. Let us remember that we too have that call. We have that faith and we mustn't keep it to ourselves. Share our faith. Plant the word of God. Plant the seed in the lives of others. Then let God do the work in developing that, his love, developing that faith in the lives of whom, in whom we have planted that seed. And then the kingdom will grow and a harvest will be reaped. Amen.
shall reaffirm our faith now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let's turn now to God in prayer. Jesus has power over life and death. Our faith in him leads us to healing and new life. It conquers the fear of death. The Father concerns himself with our fears and asks to turn us to turn to him with all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who try to bring healing and consolation into this world. May they be given renewed courage and inspiration. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who struggle to make sense of life which weighs them down. May their faith in Christ show to them the way forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are overcome by fears, whether real or irrational. May their faith lead them to peace of mind and a growing confidence in the goodness of God's creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for ourselves that we may have the faith which brings healing and peace both to ourselves and to all we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us in our prayers remember all who have died. With confidence, we commend them to God's everlasting keeping. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a moment of quietness, let us now bring to God our own prayers for today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear our prayers as we turn to you. Strengthen our faith and bring us your peace and loving kindness. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect now for this second Sunday of Trinity. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send the Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and all virtues, without which whosoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. So gathering now our prayers and praises into one, we pray as our Saviour Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
loving Father, sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven, and we share the eternal banquet with Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the God of peace enable us to do his will in every kind of goodness, working in us what pleases him. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us. May the Lord be gracious to us. The Lord look with favour on us. And the Lord give us his peace. Amen. Amen.